God's system will never change. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred by one greater than you. This is how it works. No man can honor himself. You can respect yourself, but honor is conferred. Thou shalt take some of thy honor and thou shalt put upon him so that the nation of Israel will listen to him. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You are welcome, child of God. You are welcome, believer in Christ. This is another powerful time in the presence of God. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And remember, joy is like, it's like medicine that you take and it works good in your body. But when you are sorrowful, when you are sad, it will drain your strength, it will drain your energy, and it's not good for you. Please always make sure you are happy, happy in the Lord. The Bible says our faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we bring to you again word from the Lord. And as you're about to listen to this word, please open up your heart because God is set to do something very, very remarkable in your life. Impartation is a very deep spiritual mystery that allows for graces and allows for possibilities to be transferred from carriers to those who desperately, genuinely desire it. It's one mystery that I've studied myself. I'm a rich beneficiary of this mystery. I have seen graces leave careers to those who desired them and changed their lives radically. I have seen the benefits of impartation. I have seen the consequences of ignoring impartation. The way God designed the system in this kingdom is that no matter how yielded you are, no matter how yielded you are, there are dimensions of graces that will not come by digging the well yourself. It is a river that has been flowing before your arrival. And your job is to be able to find the direction of that river and to plunge into it with understanding. And those who have sustained the wisdom to understand the mystery of impartation have received and accessed graces, very ancient graces, ancient mantles, and with them they have done much for the kingdom. In as much as God has helped us to know him in a measure, the possibilities that God has brought by grace today in our lives is largely, are largely a product of impartation. So impartation is simply defined as a spiritual system by which graces and possibilities are transferred. A spiritual system by which graces and possibilities are transferred. The way the economy of the kingdom works is that when God calls a man, God calls men to himself. This is how it works. When God calls you, he calls you to himself, to know him, to be with him. In the process of that knowledge and that encounter, a mandate is derived from your encounter. Please listen carefully. God does not call you for the primary purpose of giving you a mandate. That is already wrong. It is not consistent with how he works. He called the disciples to be with him and then that he might send them. So your growth and your knowing God, your intimacy with God is greater to God than even your witness because it is from the strength of your knowing him that you become an effective witness. Are we together this morning? It's important for us to understand this. So here's how it works. You get into a point where God calls you and he calls you to himself. He calls you to know him. He calls you to learn of him. And then, eventually, when you read Colossians 4 and verse 17, it says, Say unto Archippus that 
the ministry that thou has received in the Lord, not from the Lord, you see that, that you fulfill it. So you receive in the Lord. It is a derivative of your relationship. Whether you call it an apostolic ministry, whether you call it a prophetic ministry, an evangelical ministry, whether you call it a marketplace ministry, it doesn't matter what form and fashion it comes. The most important thing is for you to understand that the way God works is that when he calls, please listen carefully, you have to understand this. When he calls men, he calls them to himself. Are we together? Because like um, I think it was Pastor Jerry yesterday who spoke about the roots, it is in his presence that you are able to dig into that depth in the spirit. When you know him, the confidence that comes from knowing him is what keeps you in the midst of the storm while you go. Are we together now? But then when he gives you the mandate, he never sends you with a message alone. He never sends you with an assignment alone. Are we together? Yes. At the point where God is sending men, he ensures that they have access to the requisite power, the requisite empowerment, the requisite engracing that will help them to fulfill that assignment. Not even Jesus escaped this pattern. Jesus was not always anointed. Uh -uh. He was always the word, the word incarnate. But that anointing and that engracing only came at the point of his fulfilling his ministry. So the Bible tells us that he was filled with the Holy Spirit, Matthew chapter 4, driven by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after 40 days of prayer with fasting, Satan came and tempted him across various areas. And the Bible now tells us that when Satan departed, the angels came and ministered to him. And one of the synoptic accounts will say he returned in the power of the Spirit. He returned in the power. Not just full of the Spirit, he returned in the power of the Spirit. And from that time hence, Jesus began to manifest extraordinary exploits. If it was healing, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He spoke with such intelligence and wisdom. And when, you know, all of the scribes and the Pharisees brought many occasions to just trap him down, by the wisdom of the Spirit, he was able to navigate his path. Now Jesus called the disciples using the same model. He called them to himself, some as fishermen, some as financial people, and he began to mentor them and to teach them. And then a time came when he told them, tarry ye in Jerusalem. You already have the message, but that is not enough. He says, until ye be endued with power. Endued with power. Endued with power. Hallelujah. When he called Mary and told Mary, the angel now, Gabriel, saying, this is God's plan for you. You are highly favored. You shall have a child. And a man will not, a mortal man will not play any fatherly role, yet you're going to be pregnant with child. Mary said, how shall these things be seen that I know not a man? And he said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. You see that now. That at every point in the believer's journey, empowerment and gracing will always play an active role. So the disciples are in the upper room after 40 days of a post-resurrection lecture by Jesus himself. Ten more days and the Holy Ghost would come upon them. The Bible now says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that they were together gathered in one accord, suddenly it says that there came a sound from heaven and it came and filled the room where they were sitting and they saw cloven tongues like as of fire it came and rested upon every one of them they were filled with the holy ghost they began to speak with tongues other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance are we together now please let's rise to honor our father
Blessings to you, sir. Thank you so much. Please be seated. Are we together? So I said that when God calls a people, he calls you to himself to know him. Then he gives you a mandate, but with that mandate at the point of executing it. Please don't lose what you are saying. There must be need for empowerment. No empowered believer, no matter how knowledgeable, can be able to birth the purposes of God. In addition to the knowledge of the assignment, you will need empowerment. And he told the disciples, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be empowered. Acts chapter 2, the power of God came upon them and the harvest from that empowerment was 3,000 souls in one sermon. 3,000 souls. I do not find anything spectacular Peter said on that day that he had not said before. But the difference was that his speaking was not just with the excellency of speech. It was now with the power of God. Hallelujah. 3,000 souls and the exploits of the saints continued from that point onwards. Very, very important. And so it's important for believers to value the place of genuine, authentic spiritual empowerment. There is no man who can birth the purposes of the kingdom without genuine, consistent empowerment. They were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 4, they prayed and they were filled again and the room shook. Hallelujah. So when we're talking about flourishing and thriving, it is important for you to know that the role of empowerment cannot be taken away from your life. And this is not unique to ministry, as you call it, the fivefold ministry. It does not matter what endeavor, whether it is business, whether it is career, the reason why you need empowerment is because, number one, you cannot birth the purposes of God to his satisfaction in the strength of the flesh. Please listen. No matter how intelligent you are, no matter how smart you are, when God gives men mandate, he does not leave them to guess how to achieve it. There is a standard, there is an uncompromising reference. Are we together now? And until you, you walk his purposes to his standard and satisfaction, you are not accredited as being faithful. This is the reason why you need empowerment. If you were left to just your creativity, you might do so far. Men are limited. The best and the greatest without his assistance and help is still limited. It's why the Holy Spirit is called the helper. Are we together? The assignment of help is number one, to make things possible and then to make things easy. When you help a man, this is the goal behind helping. To make things possible that would not have been possible and to make things easy. So the empowerment of the spirit comes on this wise. Are we still together? Yes. And then the second reason why we need to be empowered is that the Bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone upon this earth. That there are demonical forces that have woven the agenda of darkness through the hearts of men and through systems and structures with a singular mandate to thwart the excelling of the saints and the purposes of the kingdom. You must have this at the back of your mind. No matter how advanced, how civilized, how technological we are, it will be foolish to ignore the fact that there are demon spirits and organized cadre intelligently articulated by Paul. Jesus and Paul did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that we are not alone. That everyone who vows the vow of representing the purposes of the kingdom, you have drawn a line in the realm of the spirit for the rest of your life. He said, but say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. He says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. It takes more than a good heart to bet the purposes of God and survive while you are doing it. You are thriving in a system that is determined to be antichrist. Are we together now? Yes. Without empowerment, there are severe consequences for being righteous. Severe consequences. You stand in the midst of a bedeviled world and you want to represent the purposes of God. If you are not, empowerment comes as a defense 
to keep you and to maintain. So you are in an office and you vow that you will not bribe and you will not give or take bribe. If you are not empowered to prosper, there will be consequences for that position. The consequence will so mar you, you will be a bad representation of God. Even though you are righteous. Are we together? Lot was a righteous man, but he did not have the power to save his family. He was about to lose the dignity and the integrity of his daughters, even though he was a righteous man. It took Abraham by intercession and by the ministry of angels to come and rescue him. History would have had a bad record that Abraham was, I mean, Lot was a bad father. The problem was not his righteousness. The problem was that he did not have the requisite level of empowerment. Are we together? You need empowerment to do business. There is the king of Tyre that sits upon the economic system of the earth and vets meticulously who has access to the wealth's resources. And if it is by dignity and righteousness, I tell you the system will fight you. If it has not fought you, yes, it is coming. It fought Jesus. He says, Satan, come to me. Jesus is fasting and praying. And you would think that fasting and prayer would drive Satan. But it attracted Satan to him and he was waiting patiently till he was done. The first person he saw after fasting was Satan. There are things that draw spirits to you. Listen, let me tell you this. I'm, I'm doing a brief, um, you know, and then I have to step back for a father to come up. You see, there are spirits that are assigned to men by reason of being on the earth. Whether you are saved or not. There are spirits assigned to believers. By reason of being grafted into Christ. There are spirits assigned to ministries and offices. They are not assigned to you as an individual. They don't know you as an individual. They were mandated to stop the program that flows through offices. There are spirits assigned to mantles. That is the reason why before you carry certain mantles, you must have the stature to defend the attacks that come with that mantle. Are we together now? There are many prayers that don't seem to be answered. It's a sign of God's mercy. Because you have been weighed and if, should that blessing rest upon you? No. The stamina to receive certain things many believers do not have. That is the reason why most times when you pray, you see, God will have to build capacity within you before you are trusted with certain things. Oh, I want to pastor a 5,000, 10,000 member church. All I need to do is just to understand the natural rudiments of church growth. Every man who is coming, God does not send made men to men. He sends men who need to be made. What's the kinds of people who came to David in the cave of Adullam? Men who were in debt, men who were distressed. That is the kind of members God sends to serious people. And by the time these people are coming with curses and coming with spirits and coming with yokes, coming with habits, some of them, those same spirits have torn their own destinies. And you stand without stature and all you want to see is increase in size. No, the mercy of God will withhold you from entering that blessing. Are we, are we blessed? It is true. I have seen demons in the spirit. But greater than that, the scripture tells us that the whole world lies in wickedness. Not Nigeria alone. Run anywhere you can, you will find them there. There is an organized system. Demon spirits have mobility. They have the advantage of mobility. Did you hear what I said? No visas needed. No border checks needed. They can move from swine to men, from men to trees, from trees to desert regions. Anywhere at all can be a habitation for them. Now, you want to be prepared for such a world. Are we together? I told us yesterday, beyond the rudiments of productivity, the Bible says he shall be like a tree. When that tree is planted and has its roots spread, under normal circumstances, it should produce. How about the tree in Mark 11? It was planted to the root. Everything was fine. It even had leaves. And although the Bible says it was not time of figs, Jesus expected figs. Do you know why? Because everything he talks to should obey him. The same way the fish was not supposed to bring out coin, but because Jesus gave a mandate, that means the presence of Jesus should 
create an effect that ordinary it should alter the natural course of the way things happen so he cost it for disobedience not just for taking from the earth are you saying my presence in the midst of this place has no effect on you when he spoke to the fish have you ever seen a fish with coin from the day jesus said it no because it's not the natural course but not when the master speaks he can turn anything to anything and if he speaks to a tree, even if the tree were not connected to a root, the fact, you see, Jesus does not just come and walk with seasons. He has dominion over seasons. There is a law of times and seasons. But when he comes, he has the ability to manipulate any season and make it work for you. So empowerment. You are a businessman here, you need empowerment. We have agreed through the sessions before now that the value of empowerment, and let me say this, the value of empowerment is when it comes upon a transformed mind. You see that? Now, for many people, and the mistake we make many times in the body of Christ is because we have seen through experience, through the lives of great people, that when people are empowered, they immediately begin to walk in the realm of exploits. But what people do not know is that the ratio of empowerment to transformation based on Jesus' teaching model was three and a half years to one day. Are we together? That it took three and a half years of structured mentorship to build a certain belief and understanding in them. Then they were empowered one night. Pursuing empowerment without transformation will make you lose the potency of what that empowerment should bring the problem with the woman remember we, we taught yesterday the woman who had the oil the problem was not the oil the oil could increase to any size as the vessel allowed and so the prophet said borrow not a few you don't need to borrow oil but borrow vessels expand your capacity and the bible says when there was no more vessel that the oil stayed so it is important you understand the principles of leadership, branding, productivity, administration, and so on and so forth. And then from the strength, from that vantage position, in spite of the fact that you have understanding, Proverbs chapter 3 from 5 to 7, it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Huh? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and he says to lean not. It acknowledges the fact that you have understanding, but it says do not lean on your understanding. In other words, let that not be the basis of your confidence. For our sufficiency, the Bible says, is of Christ. So empowerment comes as an advantage to the believers. And let me tell you the truth. I have seen very gifted people. I have seen very skilled people. I have seen very great people. The one thing missing in their life is that they have not accessed genuine empowerment. In my opinion, there are two principal reasons why people do not receive empowerment. One is ignorance, two is pride. One is ignorance, two is pride. Hallelujah. One more point and then we'll pray. So it is God's desire that everyone accesses the empowerment and the engracing that will empower us to flourish, but more importantly, serve the purposes of the kingdom with our lives. There are three platforms for accessing genuine spiritual power. Very quickly, three platforms. Number one, direct encounters with the spirit of power. The saints can have direct encounters with the spirit of power. Mark chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, surely I am full of the spirit please give it to us micah 3 and verse 8 not malachi micah chapter 3 and verse 8 truly or surely i am full of power by the spirit of the lord i am full of power by the spirit of the lord you can have a direct encounter the Bible says God has not given us 2 Timothy, that should be 1, 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind. There is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the saints 
where he is revealed as the spirit of power. The spirit of power. Capacity to perform any divine task to expectation. That's power. Capacity to perform any divine task to God's expectation. It would be unfair for God to have such high expectation and not empower you. As many as believed on him, he gave them power. Number two. I wish I had time. I would have spoken a lot more about the spirit of power, but I have to back down so that we allow our father come and speak and bless our hearts. But let me say this. In my little walk with God, and we're just starting this journey, I can tell you the greatest determinant to encounters with God is not prayer and fasting. It is the condition of your heart. The condition of your heart vetoes your prayer and fasting. You can pray and fast beginning from a corrupted heart. Are we together now? The Bible spoke about Amaziah that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. So the problem was not the correctness of the activity. It was the state, the motivation. The greatest determinant for genuine encounters is the purity of a man's heart. Your heart condition, prayer and fasting and all the spiritual activities are enhancers. But the foundation, sincerely I tell you, is the state of your heart. No wonder the psalmist said, search my heart and try my thoughts. And if there is any wicked way in me, he says to lead me to the way everlasting. Are we together? Number two, very quickly. What is the second platform for accessing power? The power of God, genuine spiritual empowerment is accessed through the understanding of the word. Light from scripture. Not the verses of scripture. Light from scripture. Light from scripture. A thorough understanding of the word. Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4. Amplified. Very profound scripture. The Bible says God came down from Teman. And the Holy One from Mount Haran. Can you give it to us, media, very quickly? Habakkuk chapter 3, 3 and 4. If we can see that in Amplified, okay. It says, God approaching from Sinai. He comes from Teman or Edom and the Holy One from Mount Paran. And then let's go to verse 4 very quickly. The Bible says, his brightness is like the sunlight and he has bright rays from his hand and there... In that sun-like splendor is the hiding place of his power. The power of God hides in his light. Every time his light comes to you, behind that light is the empowerment of the spirit. I've shared with you a vision I had many years ago where I saw a very giant door and it was made up of small like post office boxes and there were scriptures inscribed on every one of them. It was opening and closing. And every time it opened, light came out from it. And I didn't understand what I was seeing until the Spirit of God ministered to me that behind Scripture, the revelation of Scripture is not the verse you are reading, but the light that comes out. So the Bible says, Paul praying in Ephesians 1, to have the spirit of revelation in the knowledge. So knowledge is like a container. There is revelation inside it. You see that now? If you do not open up, you need knowledge to have revelation. But if it just stops as revelation, you do not have light. If it is true light, it lights every man. That was the true light. There are false lights. They carry a semblance of power. But you bring them in the face of real life situations and they are impotent. But it says that was the true light. And if it is light, it is for every man. Empowerment by the word empowerment by light that comes from scripture acts 20 32 and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up he says and to give you an inheritance even among them that are sanctified ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts 
Hallelujah. Light. Light. You stay with the word. You study the word. You allow the illuminating power of the word to surge through your spirit. And out of that, the residue of the word, genuine power, authority, your mind has been altered to think in a certain way. The way of victory, the way of excellence. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Are we together now? That when men say there is a casting down in the name of Jesus, for you there is a lifting up. This is not, not mere blind confession. Meditation has opened the light component of that scripture and it is resident in your spirit. I tell you, show me a man that respects light. I show you a man the devil cannot do anything about. It's only a matter of time. Mm. Light. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The last platform for accessing genuine empowerment is called impartation. Power that is accessed through alignment with anointed vessels. Power that is accessed. Now please listen as I wrap up. Power that is accessed through your alignment with anointed vessels vessels hmm. in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7 Paul was speaking to the church in Philippi and he wraps up that statement by saying ye all are partakers of my grace partakers of my grace a man can be a partaker of the grace of another person and the way God does it is this when God wants a people to experience a dimension of his empowerment, he does not start with a crowd. No. He starts with a man. When he finds that man, he enters a covenant with that man. That covenant becomes a platform for transmuting that dimension of power or that possibility. Not everything, but the dimension he seeks to flow to the nations. And when God accredits that man, nobody will access that dimension of power ignoring the presence of that covenant this is how god works so when he sends a word to jacob the intent is that it is lightened upon all israel jacob only becomes the starting point of that journey so he calls abraham but the intention is the entire globe are we together you ignore abraham you will not even reach jesus he spoke to Abraham and said, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Paul taught us that that blessing was to Abraham and his seed. The seed not being Isaac. Isaac could not replicate it to all of us. The seed being Christ. Then Galatians 3.29 says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So when God finds a man, a conduit to transmit his prosperity, a conduit to transmit his healing. He enters a covenant with that man. That man becomes his referral point across that dispensation. No matter how arrogant you are, you ignore the presence of that man. You pray and fast and there are certain dimensions of that grace you will never touch. It is his economy. That is how it works. There are men on earth today that embody certain possibilities of the kingdom. When God wants to show you mercy, he does not just give you direct encounters. He shortens the distance between you and access to them. Hallelujah. There are men today that embody the spirit of prayer. There are men today that embody the spirit of wisdom. There are men today that embody prosperity. There are men today that embody leadership. Your assignment is to have the wisdom, the discernment, and the humility to not just look at them in the flesh, but to see them for what they represent. Elijah had many sons of the prophets. You would think the next prophet will come from them, but the next prophet came from a man called Elisha. That leads me to the condition for receiving from anointed vessels, honor and service. Genuine, non-pretentious honor and service. Genuine, non-pretentious honor and service. There are many dimensions in Jesus we only see in John. Not even the apostles carried it. Non-pretentious honor and service. The man who poured water in the hands of Elijah. Not the man who joined him to prophesy. No. 
they were sons of the prophet their prophetic acumen was being trained and they knew that he was going but it did not profit them but there was a man who followed listen let me tell you something ladies and gentlemen i'm saying this because i know that we'll step back and from all the speakers that have come culminating with our father here we're privileged to have it's important there's something the body of christ is missing you see your direct access to god does not negate the system he has built you ignore it you will pay for it it will, it will you will pay for it in ministry in business whatever it is paul met jesus but he was still referred to the house of judah to wait there it was not jesus that got him filled with the holy spirit even though jesus said the holy spirit will come in honor to him you see it was in david's destiny to be king god had already given the judgment but samuel was negotiating with god and he was wasting david's time a man not satan not a spirit to the point you would think god would ignore samuel and say i am god let me go directly he kept pleading with samuel and say how long are we together now yes how long will you you have rejected Saul as king how long you are delaying another person's destiny one man and God did not bypass him to say I am God God came to him and said I know I know how emotionally connected you are to Saul but the point is I've rejected him but if you refuse to go a man's destiny is tied down and when Samuel came do you know why God had to ask Samuel to stop because if he had anointed Eliab he would be king do men have such power? Hmm. A man can look at you and say, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. It may not make sense. And sometimes with all due respect, this is our arrogant generation. We do not understand the power of prophetic blessings. Men's life have been made overnight because of the kinds of words. Let me tell you, when you find people who are anointed, bend over backwards if you can with all humility. Allow naysayers and foolish people who do not allow the understand the economy to say what they are saying. But God's system will never change. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred by one greater than you. This is how it works. No man can honor himself. You can respect yourself, but honor is conferred. Thou shalt take some of thy honor and thou shalt put upon him so that the nation of Israel will listen to him. It takes more than eloquence. takes more than a sincere heart. We are going to pray. Since our father is here, I don't qualify to do any speaking over your life again. So mine is to prepare the way and then I step back and allow him speak. You may think I'm just being humble, but that's how it works in the spirit. If you're a man of God here, learn it. It doesn't reduce you. That's how it works. Are we together? Yes. It would be unwise for me to be making prophetic declarations over you as an impartation with our Father here. I know our arrogant generation, we've all seen Jesus, but that's not how it works. There is a spiritual system. hallelujah and so reverend sam we thank you for your life i have to say this we thank you today is your birthday and thank you for what you represent to the body of christ and your contribution thank you ma thank you for everything and the transforming church my prayer for you is that this sermon will not be a waste that for every declaration that will come upon your life, that you open up your heart. If you're a servant of God here, if you're a businessman here, if you are a career person here, or you are in any pit at all trusting God to come out, or you are trusting God to scale heights, maybe you are in debt, you see, men embody possibilities. And when they bring those possibilities, you honor God, and you honor the sacrifice of alignment that has made them to be conduits and hosts of those graces. 
May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. And may you receive all that he has in store for you. In Jesus' name. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. Thank you. We are very, very appreciative of your presence in this community. This is a community of believers. We are here to enlighten ourselves through the Word of God, through practical life applicable teachings. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this channel. If you have not liked this video, please just take two seconds and just hit that like button and share this video with others to bless someone just as you have been blessed by this video. It is only God that can do the impossible. And when you are faced with impossibility in your life, the only place to run to, the only person to run to is God. And that is why we encourage ourselves to keep studying the word of God, to keep praying, fasting, to keep meditating on the word of God so that God will come through for us. Have a nice time. God bless you. See you in another of our videos. And there are so many videos that we have posted so far. Go through our channels. Go through our channel and check on our videos and see how impactful they are going to be in your life. Thank you. God bless you. Keep shining for Jesus. Keep shining for God. Peace.